Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. I'm Autumn and I'm back with another video on my channel. I talk about the JET program and teaching in Japan and Japan in general and just, yeah, all of that. So I got a couple of questions a few weeks ago about Japanese schools versus like, I'm assuming American schools because that's where I'm from. I am from America. And I wanted to do like a comparison and similarities when it comes to schooling in Japan. Now, I just want to keep in mind that I only teach at middle school. I don't know what elementary and high school like ins and outs look like. I'm also taking in perspective for when I was in elementary and middle school and high school because I don't know how it works now. I am 28. It's been quite a while since middle school. So yeah, bear with me. Additionally, I was not a teacher in the United States. Um, I've only been teaching here in Japan. So there are certain things that I don't exactly know about teaching, but I do have friends who are teachers that live in the US. So I know a little bit of their perspective. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into this video. Okay, so first I wanted to address some of the things that are the same about American schools and Japanese schools. The first thing that is similar is that lunch is provided and you do have to pay for it. Um, I, I'm pretty sure when I was in middle school, we got to eat lunch every day if you paid for it. Some students brought their own lunches. It works the same way in Japan. School lunch is provided by the school. It is done by nutritionists. If you have not seen my video about what school lunch looks like, please check the link above. Um, but school lunch is provided just like in America, you can choose to have your kid eat school lunch or they could bring their own. But I feel like Japanese parents are just way too busy for that. So most kids just eat school lunch. Another thing that is similar is that like, these are just kids. They're goofy, they're funny, they like to play. They don't exactly bully in the same way that like American kids bully. It's more psychological here. But, um, which honestly sounds a little bit worse, but anyway, like they're kids. They just, they like to have fun. These are children. You often forget, you often forget that when you are thinking about like Japanese students, like these are kids, like even when they're 12, 13, 14, they are just kids. Like, so it's the same in America. They're just little kids. They like to have fun. They, they have clicks. Like it's, it's so cute. Another thing that is similar about Japanese students and American students is that at the end of the day, they, a lot of them just really want to learn and just really want to know new things. So I feel like when it comes to me, they're really interested in getting to know me rather than like getting to know America. So they're really interested in like, like what I like to do, what I want to do. And I feel like that same curiosity can be found in American students as well. Um, the only difference, and we'll get into the differences, is that that curiosity isn't really applauded here. It's not rewarded at all. Like their inability to be creative stems from the Japanese school system in my mind, so. We're gonna go ahead and get into the differences and I'm just gonna do like side by side so differences first off Japanese schools are compulsory up until middle school so after middle school you do not have to continue to go to school that means that once they finish middle school they could just be farmers they could just work wherever however it's really uncommon for that to happen. Most kids will just go ahead and go to high school, but it is an option. They do not have to go to high school. Um, whereas in America, none of that, none of that happens. You have to finish high school. Um, I think like high school is like the bare minimum just for surviving. I mean, yeah, yeah. So it's not compulsory in, in, in America. 
you have to finish school. Uh, Japanese schools are actually longer than American schools. So what I mean is the students finish school around three, but they don't leave to go home until about six, seven. Whereas in America, most schools, they finish at like, for especially for middle school, you finish around 3.15 at the latest, at the latest four o'clock, depending on what school you go to. And you don't have to stay late for anything. You can just go home. Um, and then that leads me into my next point with Japanese schools, they make you join after school activities. You have to join one. Whereas in America, it's optional and you don't have to do anything. So, and then on top of that, take that even further in Japanese schools, you can only pick one, one school activity to do. Whereas in America, you can pick any number of them out. I knew kids that were on the soccer team, did brass band, and also did like music or theater whenever they had time. It just depends on balancing schedules in America. However, here, I, I understand why they don't, but I also don't get why they can't change their minds because these kids, once you pick one thing, that's it for the rest of, that, that's it for the rest of the year. That, that's it for the rest of your time in middle school. You, you pick badminton, you're doing badminton until the end whether you like it or not. So that's very different. I already stated the similarities of having lunch provided. However, in Japan, everyone eats the same thing for every day. You don't get a variety of different things to choose from. However, in America, the way it worked when I was in middle school, you got to choose from at least five different options. So like burgers or something healthy and salad. There was always pizza as an option. Um, you got to choose what you wanted to eat for the day. Whereas here in Japan, they don't get a choice. You get whatever today's lunch is. So if we have natto today for lunch and you don't like natto, you're eating natto today for lunch. Simple as that. So one of the major differences between Japanese and American students is free time and expression. So students here in Japan, in my opinion, I feel like they have a harder time expressing themselves because a lot of their coursework and a lot of their um, environment doesn't allow them to be expressive. So it's, for example, it's very difficult for me to get them to think outside of the box and do something fun. But in America, you can easily have a lesson that's just super fun, super, super expressive, out of the box, you know? In in Japan, I feel like I have to kind of, I have to make a fool of myself for them to feel it's okay to make a fool of them, of their selves. And I don't know, it kind of makes me sad because I really, really want them to be, like they're ginky, of course, they're all energetic and fun, but I feel like when it comes to thinking outside of the box and thinking outside of Japan, they really have a hard time doing that. They also have a hard time being expressive because honestly, these kids are stressed out. A lot of these kids have more gray hair than me and I've got like three. Like they, they've got more gray hair than me, they are stressed. And I feel like America wouldn't really truly push the kids to be stressed out like that. But this is just a part of like Japan's like culture. They just, they are always on the go. Like they only get one day off of school realistically because Monday through Saturday, they are at the school for something. They only get Sunday to relax. Whereas in America, you, Monday through Friday is for the school, but Saturday, Sunday, you do whatever you want. Whether you come to the school, that's on you, you know? Another thing that I would like to talk about that is different is discipline when it comes to teachers and students. So here in Japan, I haven't seen too many disciplinary actions from teachers. Um, I've seen like a harsh talking to 
but I've never seen like a suspension or like I don't see fights in the hallways I don't see a lot of that stuff teachers don't really at my school teachers don't really reprimand the students like they would in America now with that being said I have heard cases of some teachers being able to lay their hands on students no I do not agree but it's Japan it's not my culture these are not my like things if it were my children yes I'd have an issue with it but I feel like in some places in Japan maybe that's just accepted so um, that's very different I've never truly seen a teacher like straight up yell at a child um, I know it happens but I haven't seen it um, so for example when my kids are super rowdy usually it's like right after lunch they're just way rowdy the, the food is running through their veins they played soccer they're just full of energy and they're just really disruptive and don't really sit down long enough for an English lesson my teacher doesn't really like yell at them like she will just be like oh you know so and so look look at the board look at the board like and usually they fall in line but eventually like it depends on the student really but usually they fall in line and they're like oh, okay fine I'll just I'll shut up and I'll watch the board I'll you know be a good student but um I've never seen like a kid like kicked out of class like oh get out like you're being disruptive um, also when it comes to sleeping a lot of these kids like I said are stressed so they will sleep in class depending on the teacher is how it's handled a lot of time a student will sleep in class and the teacher will just say their name or a friend will wake them up and no one gets in trouble for it it's not really the same in America <laughs> um, the amount of times I have been kicked out of class for being disruptive or being sleepy. I mean, I wasn't that bad of a student, but like it's happened. Um, getting sent to the principal's office is a thing in America. I don't think I've seen it as much in, in Japan. Like I've seen kids be in trouble, but it's like very small amounts of in trouble if that makes sense another thing that's really different when it comes to disciplining children in Japan is a lot of it is done outside of the classroom and I think that's just to save face because I feel like as hard and like as hard-working and resilient Japanese as Japanese kids are I feel like they're also equally very fragile um, and so reprimanding a student in front of all the other students, I feel like would be so like detrimental to their psyche. So I, a lot of them are reprimanded in the teacher's room. So only teachers are there to see it. And then, like I said, it's nothing super crazy. It's just like a talking to, or like a, Hey, sit here for a minute and think about your actions. But it's not really like like uh like in america if a kid is being disruptive that kid usually isn't pulled out of class to be talked to they are usually handled right there in front of everybody as like a lesson like don't be like this kid because he's getting his behind handed to him you know um so that's very different and then i guess that leads into my next difference which is violence in the classroom violence in the schools so obviously if you are aware of america if you know about america if you don't live under a rock you know we deal with a lot of gun violence it's just it is a way of life in my country now like that's just how they do things like they have routine gun safety like checks where like i feel like every other day i turn on the news and some kids have been mowed down by somebody with a gun however gun violence isn't necessarily a thing here um and like i said earlier bullying is more psychological than it is physical like kids roughhouse with each other all the time and usually when i see something that i feel is too overboard i'll stop them but they're just being kids they're just having fun they're just you know they're just bsing around they bully more on the psychological side, like, oh, I don't want to walk home with this kid today, or, oh, I don't want to sit next to this kid for lunch today. I feel like it's that, it's that type of bullying, 
Whereas in America, like, they'll straight up, like, you know, they'll put hands on you. So I feel like in America, it's very different. But when it comes to violence among the kids in Japan, I have heard about kids bringing knives to school and, like, stabbing students. But it's not happened at my school. I have heard that it has happened, though. Um, I feel like at that, when, when it comes to that type of a situation, it's like, it's either stress, psychological, or like the kid is just done. So I don't think that violence in Japan is any worse than violence in America. I just think the method of what's used is different. I full-heartedly feel that if guns were allowed in this country there would be gun violence there would be i just i mean you people get their hands on some guns and they just go nuts you know like so i think that um when it comes to violence they are different now will i say yes i do feel like safer around the kids than i do if i were in America of course I think that the chances of a child stabbing me are very very low whereas like the chances of a child taking out their anger on me in America with the gun that's a, that's a little higher it's a little higher um but yeah so that's one thing another thing that happens here as far as violence is there is a lot of sexual harassment among the boys and girls so oftentimes when it comes to their like recess time when they hang out you won't see too many boys and girls hanging out they hang out in groups and they hang out separately and at first i was like that's weird because when i was in middle school i had boys and girlfriends but in japan because sexual harassment is such a common thing like this is just like an everyday life thing that happens here um the kids kind of like know how to steer away from it and these are boys like they have hormones going on they're getting you know they're they're new into this whole like becoming a man thing and you know sometimes those primal urges kind of like make this stop working so um i have heard of students assaulting other students at other schools but it has not happened at my school as, as far as I'm aware of. So that is one thing that I will say is a little bit different. Another difference between Japanese schools and American schools are cleaning. So in Japan, you have to clean schools with kids. The kids, they all clean schools, they line up. It's very, very culty, but they line up and everybody cleans the rooms. The bathrooms are cleaned by the kids. The teacher's rooms are cleaned by the kids. Uh, hallways, patios, the, the area where you put your shoes, everything is cleaned by the students. Now, is it a good job? No, no, not at all. Some of these kids are very bad at cleaning, but they teach kids to clean so that they can be uh, responsible. Um, whereas in America, we have like maybe one or two janitors per school that just do all the cleaning once kids are gone. So that's different. That's been something I don't like because I don't like cleaning other people's messes. <laughs> um, okay. And then the next thing that is different are the types of classes. So in America, and I mean, I haven't, like I said, I haven't been in school in a very long time, but in America, I feel like I had a variety of different classes that I could take depending on what school you go to. So I didn't have a cooking class available or a sewing class available or just a straight up home ec class. We had science, math, social studies, you know, geography, geology, all that stuff, language, yeah. But we didn't have classes specifically for living in Japan they have classes which I think is so cool they have classes that teach them how to cook because when they live alone you're gonna have to cook classes 
that teach you how to like sew your stuff together like it the variety of classes that they have here is so interesting but then it's also a bad side to that is like they only can learn english they don't have french as an option they don't have spanish as an option they don't even have chinese and korean as an option Whereas in America, you don't have to learn French if you don't want to. You could learn German, you could learn Spanish, you could learn Japanese. I feel like the versatility is kind of all over the place. If I made a perfect school, I'd have home ec courses and multiple different language courses they could choose from. It'd be the perfect school. I'd make the perfect school. And then, the last difference that I wanted to talk about is engagement. One of um, my comments from a few weeks ago was talking about how do you keep the kids engaged? How do they like keep the kids like here with us? Um, in America, if a student is not engaged in class, it is called out right there. You know, it's up to the teacher to do their best to keep a child engaged and and learning whereas in japan it is solely on the kid if the kid decides that he does not want to listen to the teacher he doesn't want to participate he doesn't want to engage in the lesson that's on him at the end of the day the kid is blamed for his lack of engagement his lack of understanding whereas in America it would be on the teacher so I feel like in Japan the teachers will say like they give you like a few warnings like hey pay attention hey look over here hey what are you doing I'm it's up here look at the board but then after a few times the teachers are like shoot I don't care do whatever you want I don't think that that type of like engagement tactics are working because I feel like a lot of kids are like, there's a lot of factors into what keeps a kid engaged in school or not. And like I said, a lot of these kids are stressed. So because they're stressed out, like I personally, I don't bug them too much when they're, when they're not paying attention because you've got school today, after school club after this, and then you're going to cram school. I'm not about to mess up your sleep schedule. You get some rest. But at the end of the day, if they do fail a class, it's on them and not on the teacher. And I think that's the one thing that I kind of, I don't know. I don't know if I agree or disagree with it because I have a lot of friends that are teachers in America and the teachers get blamed for the students' lack of understanding and the students' inability to, to be taught. Whereas, like, I feel like it's kind of a both thing. Like, the teacher should be on a level, and then the student should also have a level of wanting to be taught that meets the teacher's level of teaching. And then, you know, everything kumbaya from there. But, um, yeah. So, those are my differences and similarities um, when it comes to schools in Japan and schools in America. I feel like having technology in the school and everything is so similar that like it's you're really the biggest difference between American schools and Japanese schools is the culture Japanese schools and American schools could be the same if we walk the same pathway but we don't so you'll see similarities, you'll see differences, you'll like some, you'll dislike others. But at the end of the day, what I've come to realize is that these are children. They like to have fun, just like any typical child does. And they want to be, they want to be as expressive as possible. So as a teacher, as an ALT, I try my best to let them just be themselves. Like... If I know you like Pokemon, we're going to talk about Pokemon because that's going to help you learn English. We're going to do what you like. But anyway, I'm going to stop rambling. 
thank you so much for watching my video if you have any comments questions or suggestions please put them below um, don't forget to like comment and subscribe also um, and then just yeah let me know what you guys want to talk about next because that was a really good topic thank you you know who you are for commenting that that was a really good topic because I think that we should know the differences and the similarities between the schools, right? Right? Exactly. All right, cool. I'm going to go because I'm waiting on a package. Peace. But no, for real, honestly, if I had a student, if I had kids here, I think that I would raise them in the Japanese school system up until middle school. And then after that, well, you know what? I don't know. I don't know because if I was in America, my kids was going to be homeschooled anyway. I, I, I don't want to send my, my kids to school in America. But also, like, I don't want them stressed out in Japan. Poor, poor things. Ugh. My kids. I love my kids. They're so resilient. They just, ugh, they're amazing. Thank you.